Norman, the moderate rise and tragic fall of a New York fixer, a title that trips off the tongue, um, directed by Joseph Seed and starring Richard Gere and Michael Sheen uh, and uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg, many, but centrally Richard Gere. Richard Gere appears to be experiencing a kind of late life reconnaissance. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the gear version of that would be. A regearsance. Mm, no, I don't know what it is. And um, you interviewed him for, was it Arbitrage that you interviewed yes. him for? Okay. Arbitrage. Well, it's, one of my, it's one of my favourite interviews because I was able to tell him that he'd ruined my life. Yes, exactly. Of, <laughs> <laughs> and he was just not switched on in the interview at all until I thought, right, if there's a moment, I'm going to tell him he ruined my life yeah. by his whole mayo mayonnaise mayo, thing. Mayo, mayo, mayonnaise. Agenda. And after that, he woke up yeah. and we were fine. Okay. So, I mean, I've always been a... I've, I've got a real soft spot for Richard Gere. And believe me, I've stuck with him through thick and thin. And I've often, you know, uh, I've mocked him, you know, Mr. Planky, Mr. Blinky. But I have, there is a part of me that just loves Richard Gere. And with things like, you know, Arbitrage, Time Out of Mind, Benefactor, he has really kind of found his, like, he's, you know, his second win. He's having this, this really interesting late life uh, sort of, you know, career change. Playing loners, playing people who are isolated, playing whether they're, you know, they have no money at all, or they have loads of money, whether they have, you know, no home or own more houses than they can do. Somehow he, he is, he's got himself into the habit of playing these slightly fractured later life characters and doing it rather well. So in this, he plays Fixer Norman, who is somebody who's always trying to make deals, desperately trying to make deals, to put people together, to be in the middle of a meeting. The fact is, he doesn't really know anybody, and he's not really friends with anybody. Everybody kind of doesn't, doesn't really know him or doesn't really like him, and yet he shambles around from place to place wearing this, um, this kind of... Uh, camel coloured coat and this uh, his hair is arranged in a way that makes it look like his ears stick out more than he, he he looks like Dustin Hoffman weirdly enough he's like he's physically shrunk to play this uh, th this character and he basically goes around meeting worming his way into meetings do, do, door stepping people and it, all the time trying to do a deal, trying to set up a deal, despite the fact that people don't want to deal with him and he will not take no for an answer. Here's a clip. A very high official, I, I can't mention his name right now, maybe an author, to sell his country's tax receivables to a third party. 80 cents on the dollar. Excuse me, I have to leave. This is unacceptable. Please. Bill, Bill, no, I, I, I wouldn't be doing this if, it, if I didn't think it was worth Joe's time. No, don't trust me, trust Philip. Good things come in surprising ways. You never know, you never know, right? I mean, what, worst comes to worst, he kicks me out the door. No, worst comes to worst, he kicks me out the door. It is my job to keep people like you away. Don't you get that? Yes. So please, respect my position. Stop. Please. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to say. So I'll tell my partners that we had a good conversation. And we'll see what happens, OK? Thank you, Bill. And that tone of voice is basically carries all the way through the film. And uh, he's what happens is that he somehow manages to inveigle his way into the confidence of a rising politician by buying him a pair of shoes. And the next thing, he finds himself at the centre of uh, you know uh, this this, this un, uh, uh, you know, unfolding scandal. And yet he's always been on the outside and somehow he's he's found his way into the middle of power and I mentioned that thing that I said he reminded me a little bit of Dustin Hoffman there is a little bit of Dustin Hoffman a little bit of Dustin Hoffman's uh, Razzo Rizzo in uh, uh, Midnight Cowboy also there is some of De Niro's Rupert Popkin I mean he's almost a stalker he's a kind of figure who has a, a lot of pathos he, there's a lot about him that is pathetic but he is you know waiting on following people there's lots and lots of shots of him looking lurking essentially stalking and at one point in the narrative he meets somebody who is sort of like a a, a young proto version of himself and he's kind of appalled by it and what happens is that as he as he works this strange system, being thrown out of parties, being shown out of restaurants, there was a moment that reminded me of a French connection of Gene Hackman and um, uh, Roy Scheider standing in the freezing cold whilst uh, Fernando Ray is eating in this posh restaurant and they're on the outside and he's on the inside and, but your sympathies are with him. And somehow you do come to sympathise with his character and his life is desperate. There is a very, very strong sense of desperation. He, he, and yet he is... 
he has some weird code of conduct. And at one point, somebody says, look, exactly what is it that you do? And then he sits down and he explains what it is that he does, which actually turns out to be his undoing, because in explaining what it is that he does, he's starting to lay open a series of secrets to some extent that nobody should know about. It's a really strange film, and I thought Gear was terrific in it. It's certainly something which is going to have, you know, it's, it, 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 it has a, it's a niche market film, absolutely. But I thought he was really good in it. I thought it was very well uh, written uh, and directed by uh, Joseph Cedar. There is a, one sequence in it in which he is about to, he is about to be found out. He is about to be revealed to be a fraud, and something happens that you don't expect, and it's very moving. And the whole film really rests on Richard Gere's shoulders. And I thought he did it terrifically well. He, he, you believe in that character. There's a little bit of death of a salesman in there. There's this, this sense of somebody who doesn't really live anywhere, doesn't really do anything, but is constantly on attempting to get these non-existent deals together. It also it, it is a contemporary story. It's a, it's a story which does have you know, kind of strange resonances about the way that business connections may or may not work at the moment. And I'm looking at the television, everything that's going on in the news. It, it seemed weirdly contemporary. I don't think it's going to find a big audience, but I thought it was very good, and I thought Gear was terrific in it.